section 18 south is said there is a mountain named mandara adorned with cloud like peaks it is the best of mountains and is covered all over with intertwining herbs these countless birds pour forth their melodies and beasts of prey roam about the gods the apsaras and the kinnaras visit the place upwards it rises 11000 yojanas and descends downwards as much the gods wanted to tear it up and use it as a churning rod but failing to do so came to vishnu and brahman who were sitting together and said on to them devise some efficient scheme consider ye gods how man how mandra may be dislodged for our good Shauti continued, O son of Brigo, Vishnu with Brahmana assented to it, and the lotus-eyed one Vishnu laid the hard task on the mighty Ananta, the prince of snakes. The powerful Ananta directed thereto both by Brahman and Narayana. O Brahmana, tore up the mountain with the woods thereon and the denizens of those woods. and the gods came to the shore of the ocean with ananta and addressed the ocean saying o ocean we have come to chant thy water for obtaining nectar and the ocean replied be it so as i shall not go without a share of it i am able to bear the prodigious agitation of my water set up by the mountain the gods then went to the king of tortoises and said to him o tortoise king thou wilt have to hold the mountain on thy back the tortoise king agreed and indra contrived to place the mountain on the farmer's back and the gods and the asuras made mandara churning staff and asuki the cord and set about churning the deep for amrita the asuras held vasuki by the hood and the gods held by by the tail and ananta who was on the side of gods at intervals raised the snake's wood and suddenly lowered it and in consequence of the stretch vasuki received at the hands of the gods and the asuras black vapors with flames issued from his mouth these turned into clouds charged with lightning out showers that refreshed the tired gods and flowers that also fell on all sides of the celestials from the trees and the whirling mandara refreshed them then o brahmana out of the deep came a tremendous roar like unto the roar of the clouds at the universal dissolution diverse aquatic animals being crushed by the great mountain gave up the coast in the salt water and many denizens of the lower regions and the world of varuna were killed large trees abounding with birds on the whirling mandara were torn up by the roots and fell into the water the mutual friction of those trees also produced fires that blazed up frequently the mountains thus looked like a mass of dark clouds charged with lightning o brahmana the fire spread and consumed the lions elephants and other creatures that were on the mountain then indra extinguished the fire by pouring down heavy showers after the churning o brahmana had gone on for some time kami exudations of various trees and herbs vested with the properties of amrita mingled with the waters of the ocean and the celestials attained to immortality by drinking of the water mixed with those gums and with the liquid extract of gold by decrease the milky water of the agitated deep turned into clarified butter by virtue of those gums and juices but nectar did not appear even then the gods came before the moon granting brahman seated on his seat and said sir we were spent up we are not any strength left to churn further nectar hath not had arisen so that now we have no resource save narayana on hearing them 
Brahm and said to Narayana, O oh Lord, condescend to grant the God's strength to churn the deep afresh. Then Narayana agreeing to grant their various prayers said, Hey wise ones, I grant ye sufficient strength. Go put the mountain in position again and churn the water. Re-establish it thus in strength, the gods recommends churning. After a while, the mild moon of a thousand rays emerged from the ocean. Thereafter sprung forth Lakshmi dressed in white, then Soma, then the white steed, and then the celestial gem, Kaustuma, which graces the breast of Narayana. Then Lakshmi, Soma, and the steed, fleet as the mind, all came before the gods on high. Then arose the divine Dhanvantari himself, with the white vessel of nectar in his hand. And seeing him, the Asura set up a loud cry, saying, It be ours. And at length rose the great elephant, Airavata, of huge body, and with two pair of white tusks. And him took Indra and wielder of the thunderbolt. But with the churning still going on, wise and Kalakuta appeared at last. Engulfing the earth, it suddenly blazed up like a fire, attended with fumes. And by the scent of the fearful Kalakuta, the three worlds were stupefied. And then Shiva, being solicited by Brahman, swallowed that poison for the safety of the creation. The divine Maheshwara held it in his throat and it is said that from that time he is called Nilakanta, blue-throated. Seeing all these wondrous things, the Asuras were filled with despair and got themselves prepared for entering into hostilities with the gods for the possession of Lakshmi and Amrita. Thereupon Narayana called his bewitching Maya, illusive power to his aid and assuming the form of an enticing female, conquered with the Dan- Danavas, the Danavas and the Daityas, charmed with her exquisite beauty and grace, lost their reason and unanimously placed the Amrita in the hands of that fair damsel. So ends the 18th section in the Astika Parva of the Adi Parva.